Welcome to today's video. So today we are going to discuss about uh, the bits and pieces brought together in chemical reaction engineering. It's a very important topic for chemical engineers in particular and also for a few other departments and it's a very relevant topic in interviews in gate and in solving industrial operational problems. Yes, chemical reaction engineering and the basic equations, basic design equations associated with the reactors that are commonly used in the industry. Yes, we are talking about CSTR, continuous stirred tank reaction. Reactor. We are talking about BR, that is batch reactor, and uh, finally PFR, that is uh, plug flow reactor. And we are also going to talk about the generalistic design equation for a PBR, that is uh, uh, for a um, packed bed reactor in which the catalyst is used in the packings so as to undergo the reaction and the interaction between the two media uh, reactant streams. So let us consider a basic equation of A plus B forming C plus D. And Thereafter, we are going to discuss about the basic design equations if we want to design a CSTR, we want to design a BR or we want to design a PFR for that particular process. Uh, now, if you want uh, me to discuss about the derivation of this uh, formulas, it's quite simple. Even you can do the same by using a simple uh, technique. I am going to discuss about that. And uh, if you want me to derive the same, I am going to do that. But mostly people these days want to know the trick. They do not want to go into the details of it. If you want to straight away design any CSTR, design any DR or design any PFR, this is all you need. These are the equations that you would need to design this particular equipment in any industry, irrespective of the industry you are in. So, let us talk about what is the origin of these equations. For any equation in chemical reaction engineering or mass transfer or heat transfer, always remember this balance formula. For energy balance, for mass balance, this is a balance strike. What is the formula? Input minus output plus minus generation or depletion is equals to accumulation. Remember this thoroughly. When we used to study, our professionals used to stress on this particular formula time and again that the world, the universe is governed by this principle. Input minus output plus minus generation or depletion plus in case of generation minus in case of depletion. That is uh, whatever is consumed up due to the reaction or whatever is added up due to the reaction. A generation of depletion is equal to accumulation in the system. Uh, that is, if it is not a steady state problem, there is going to be an accumulation term that over time, some amount of material will keep on accumulating or some amount of energy is going to keep on accumulating. So these are the, this is the basis. This is the basis for any mass balance, mass or heat balance equation. Any type of balance equation, if you are going to throw out that, you are going to find this particular steps. Now let us talk about what happens in a... Continuous stirred tank reactor, what happens in a batch reactor and what happens in a plug flow reactor. Continuous stirred tank reactor, as the name suggests, it's a continuous process. Now, since it's a continuous process, the input is continuous, the output is continuous, and there is a continuous stirring in the system. So this is the kind of a chamber. There is continuous stirring in the system. There is input and there is output from the system. So there is a continuous input, there is a continuous output, and the steady state of the system is maintained. So the input is there, the output is there. There is going to be a generation or depletion depending on whether you consider A or B or C or D. If we consider C, C is going to be generated, so there is going to be plus generation. If we consider A, which we generally do in kind in, in, in these type of design equations uh, uh, derivation, we consider A. As you can see, we have done all these calculations with respect to A as the reactant, not in terms of products. So if we consider A, it's going to be a depletion term, and over time, A is going to be depleted depending on the rate of the reaction of this particular reaction, A plus B forming C plus D. So over time, there is always going to be some depletion of A and the input minus output uh, minus depletion is going to be accumulation. Now, accumulation is zero in this case. Accumulation is zero. Accumulation is zero in this case for a CSTR because CSTR is primarily, primarily my friends, let us consider this, let us understand this. CSTR is basically a steady state process. Ideal steady state. Ideal steady state CSTR equation we have written and if we strike the mass balance in an ideal CSTR equation, we are going to end up in this equation. We are only discussing the end products, the end results of the design equation which can be directly put in uh, into a simulation or into a structurization of a design equation once you are trying to design a CSTR in your plant. So let me tell you what does this terms signify. The basic equation is 
volume of the CSTR divided by the flow into a CSTR, total flow into a CSTR may contain A, may contain B, may contain some traces of C and D as well. The total flow of uh, into a CSTR is equal to the residence time in a CSTR. Tau is the residence time, my friends, is equal to CA0, that is initial concentration of A minus CA, final concentration of A, exit concentration of A by minus R, that is the rate of equation. This is the rate of the reaction and this will be nothing but K C A to the power N where N is the order of the reaction, K is the rate constant of the reaction. Now this might have some complex forms not only K C A to the power N because that might not be first order reaction, might not be second order, might not be zeroth order. It might be a complex reaction which has a fractional order. So it might be K1 C A whole to the power half by K1 plus K3 C A whole to the power 2. This, some kind of equations like this do exist in chemistry. Uh, not everything is so simple uh, like uh, a first order reaction or a second order reaction. If it is so, if it is a second order reaction, it's going to be K C A square straight away. Where K is the rate constant and uh, as we know that uh, C A is the concentration. So this is the rate of the reaction and finally, finally what we do is we take, uh, we multiply, we divide the entire equation on both sides by CA0, CA0 divided on both sides. So we get this kind of an equation which is most commonly used as a design equation of a CSTR. This is the most common design equation that we generally jot down when we talk about a CSTR that is V by FA0. Now FA0 what it is? It is Q into CA0. There is total flow into the concentration of A which gives the flow of A into the reactor. So V by flow of A, only A, not B, not C, not D, only flow of A into the reactor is equals to residence time by concentration of, initial concentration of A is equals to conversion. Now conversion, what is it? Conversion is a term that has been defined in particular as CA0 minus CA by CA0. So XA. Let us understand this. XA is nothing but CA0 minus CA by CA0. So initial concentration minus final concentration by initial concentration. This is the conversion. This is called the conversion of a reaction. Uh, I have converted 65% of A. That is, I have achieved XA is equals to 0.65 or expressed in percentage is equals to 65%. So I have converted 65% of A. And this is the significance of XA. And as we have already stated, minus RA is the rate of the reaction. So this is the design equation for a CSTR. Now, many people do not know the design equation of a CSTR. Many people do not know the design equation of a batch reactor. They try to figure it out. But you need to remember these forms in final. Uh, because uh, that's going to be the quick wit that's going to be tested. Because you're going to straight away given a problem from CSTR. Solve this problem. You will be given certain parameters and you will be asked to solve for generally you will be asked to solve for the volume of the CSTR that is needed. Now we have a separate video discussing the CSTRs in series. Uh, that's a complex equation. You are going to um, like uh, see uh, that uh, video and you are going to figure out uh, what is exactly being told in that particular video uh, of uh, CSTR in series. Uh, um, how to find out the end concentration of each CSTR that are in series. Now talking about batch reactor. Batch reactor again very simple equation is very simple to derive because batch reactor first of all is a non-steady state reaction because it changes over time. So there is going to be a time term associated with it. This is the time term. So the concentration doesn't change uh, with anything else but changes with time. So uh, straight away no input, input 0, output 0. Batch reactor. Batch reactor is anything, any reactor, any reactor with closed structure, no input and no output. So output and input are completely blocked. The reactants are taken in the reactor and they are given some time to react among themselves and over time its concentration is uh, like uh, uh, measured uh, over time and its concentration is monitored over time. So we see that straight away the only terms that are left are accumulation and this generation or depletion. So since it's a depletion, it's going to be a minus as we have already stated. So DCA DT is equal to minus RA. This is the basic reaction where CA, where CA is nothing but number of moles into volume of the uh, batch reactor. So number of moles into volume of the batch reactor. Now if we talk about the famous design equation of a batch reactor, when we talk of batch reactors, we talk about some 
famous equations. When we talk about CSTR, we talk about the famous equation. This is the famous equation in term when we talk about the batch reactor. T is equals to CA0 integration of 0 to XA dxA by minus RA in terms of once again the conversion. Now, uh, once again, if we like break down the CA in terms of uh, dxA, we are going to find that uh, from, from the equation that I had written, x is equal to CA0 minus CA by CA0. If we try to break that down, we will reach into this final equation. This is to be remembered. T time, time, the time of residence time in the res residence time in the batch reactor is equal to initial concentration of the batch reactor of integration of 0 to xA uh, dxA, that is conversion that you desire, divided by minus RA. And minus RA can actually be represented in terms of kCA over to the power n. And CA is again a function of xA, that is conversion. Final concentration is a fun function of conversion as we have already stated xA is nothing but CA0 minus CA by CA0. So CA is straight away a function of xA because CA0 and CA0 are uh, constants, they do not change, they are the inlet concentration. So straight away this equation can be drawn and RA can be found in terms of xA and this equation can be solved. Design equation for CSTR, design equation for B, BR, batch reactor. Now coming finally to the plug flow reactor. Now how does the plug flow reactor look, looks like? It also has, it also has input and output. It is input minus output plus minus generation or depletion is equal to accumulation. But it is not a, it's, though it's a steady state process, but it's, it changes over the length of the reactor. It changes over the length of the reactor. That is, a plug flow is generated like this. Plug flow is generated like this. It looks like a plug. That's why it's called a plug flow reactor. It looks like a plug. The profile looks like a plug flow. So it's a plug flow reactor. And over the entire reactor, it keeps on the concentration keeps on changing, and the volume is also variable. That's why we work with differential volume there. Differential volume there. But if we need the total volume required for a plug flow reactor, if we undergo the equation, we are going to end up in an equation of dv by q is equals to d tau is equals to dca by minus r a. More famously, like uh, if we express in terms of conversion once again, xa final conversion, this is what we are going to end up with. V by fa naught, that is again this type of an equation, somewhat this type of an equation, volume of the PFR. Volume of the PFR needed divided by the flow rate of A entering the PFR and exiting the PFR is equals to residence time in the PFR by CA0, that is initial concentration of A is equals to dxA, where xA is the conversion by minus RA once again integrated from 0 to xA and RA being a function of xA which can be represented as xA. So this is as simple as that. So CSTR, BR and PFR we have the three equations and now finally what we are going to do we are going to write the fourth equation PDR. Since I, I wanted you to understand the significance of the terms here you have already understood what does tau signify residence time, what does V signify, what does FA0 signify, what does CA0 signify, what does uh, XA signify and what does minus RA signify. So similarly PDR also has a similar kind of an equation that is that, uh, that is packed bed reactor, packed bed reactor it's nothing but weight of catalyst or weight of packings of a packed bed reactor, weight of a packed bed reactor by FA0 is equals to integration of dxA by minus RA 0 to xA. So this is the design equation. Only thing that has changed in this design equation is weight of the catalyst instead of volume of the PFR. So in a packed bed reactor we know that the catalyst weight or the catalyst bed weight is required rather than the volume in itself because packings will be there there is going to be some void fraction so volume is not of much significance so the design equation has been put up in such a way that this represents the uh, WPDR or the, like uh, weight of the catalyst used in the packed bed reactor divided by the um, uh, mass flow rate this is the mass flow rate till then this was a volumetric flow 
rate of A into the chamber, but there, here it is the mass flow rate of A into the chamber is equals to nothing but dxa by minus ra whole integration 0 to xa. Once again, this is the final equation for a packed bed reactor. Very important. So CSTR, BR, PFR and PBR, we have found out the four design equations and if we have to approach them graphically, it's as simple as anything in a graph, in a graph my friends, if we take this DXA like anything should be plotted across and around XA that is conversion and if we, we see that, we see that whatever equation, whatever variant we need since it's within the integration, it's going to be like if I draw for a PFR and CSTR and BR. Let's draw for a PFR, CSTR and BR. Graphically, it's going to be something like this. XA, always XA is going to be on the uh, on the x-axis. If A naught by minus R A and it's something like this maybe. So, for a CSTR, let the final concentration be XAF, let the initial concentration be 0 and this reaction, this shaded reaction, region, gives me my V volume, the area of the shaded region. Similarly, for a PFR, similar type of equation will be there, this is going to be the graph, F by, F is 0 by minus RA, Plotted against XA, final XAF is this, supposedly 90% conversion. This region below the graph, that is covered under the graph, since it's a differential equation, this is going to be the area is going to be my V. So, this is it. This is it, guys. And for a dash here, hope you understand the design equations by now. For a batch reactor, let me talk. That if I plot, if I plot this against XA, and uh, this is let me consider it a CA naught by minus RA. And if we draw like this, the section under this, it's the final. The section under this will give me the time. The area is going to be the time. So these are the three equations that we have jotted down. Similarly, for a PBR, we can visualize that F is 0 minus, uh, by minus RA and XA, these two, the area is going to give you the weight of the catalyst, W and not V. So volume of CSTR, volume of PFR, time in a BR batch reactor, and finally, weight of the catalyst in a packed bed reactor. These are the four things that you will be required to design when you are going for individual reactors. And I have given you the design equations that mattered. So uh, that is it for today. Since you've got an idea about the basic design equations, if you want me to derive the same, please let us know in the comments section. And uh, keep on viewing our content. Subscribe to our channel. Share it with your friends. Like, share, subscribe. That's what we can expect of you. Thank you very much.